Hi again guys and welcome to yet another review from the 1.13 update pack and this is a car which I've had a couple of requests to review and also to do some tuning for so we might get to that in a couple of days time perhaps the classic Dodge Challenger. Big Hemi engine, iconic design used in a number of movies and games and for those with the keen eye you'll probably recognize the livery that I created on this car. A couple of people have done it and it is of course a reference to Driver San Francisco. One of I would say the best driving games I've ever played and I've played quite a few. Definitely one of my favorites as well and many of the things that I love about that game can now finally be transferred kind of ironically given how long ago Driver San Francisco came out in comparison to how long Gran Turismo has been around it can actually teach Gran Turismo a few things because although Driver San Francisco of course isn't as realistic in most ways for instance the physics in some ways Driver San Francisco is actually a surprisingly accurate game to real life and more so in terms of the way that you drive the car rather than how the cars perform. The performance isn't that realistic but if you actually look at for instance the way your hands are positioned on the steering wheel, the way the driver uses one hand when he's reversing like you would in a real car, the way he actually presses the horn when you press the horn which happens in almost no other pure driving game Stuff like that adds to the authenticity, stuff like better tyre smoke than pretty much any other game I've played. There are all these things, and again, yet another one, suspension. The suspension looks and feels and acts just like an old school muscle car should. It's wallowy, it's soft, but at the same time you can have a ton of fun with it, and that is exactly what I wanted to replicate with this car, because this one is tuned. I've dropped the weight a little bit, increased the power a little bit, but most of the effort that went into this tune was to make it handle more like it did on Driver San Francisco. So basically I softened everything up. Softer suspension, higher ride height, to allow it to wallow around more, to really get that tail out through the corners, but more than just drifting, I wanted it to look like a classic muscle car should when it's going through, say, a movie chase scene or being driven on a game. That sway that the suspension has, it's of course not as fast, but it's a whole lot more fun and it looks really cool. Now, what about in terms of what this car is capable of? Because it has its fans, for sure, but the fans of this car, I think, probably have more love for it in the real world than in, for instance, Gran Turismo. Because, let's be honest, it's not really a hugely useful muscle car on Gran Turismo 6. You can use it, of course, if you want to. There's no reason why not. It's well-priced. It is pretty fast. But it never quite feels outstanding. Now, whether or not it should is another question entirely, of course, but for those who do love the car, of course they want it to feel great. And yet it's a relatively easy muscle car to beat with plenty of others. Something like the Nova or the classic Camaro can quite easily outmaneuver this car because it's bigger and heavier and wallowier. And even in a straight line, the sheer power just doesn't feel like it's quite as, as there, really. It's something like a Chevelle, the SS454, of course, or a Superbird, or even something like a, a Charger Super B feels faster than this. And some of them are faster, especially once you tune them. So what about now? Well, again, as I've said with a lot of the other classics, pretty much all of the classics so far, actually, apart from maybe the Jaguar XJ13, they feel better than they ever have before in the franchise. And one of the reasons why, and this goes back to what I said earlier on about Driver being light years ahead of Gran Turismo, kind of ironically, is that for the first time ever, really, truly, in the franchise of Gran Turismo, the suspension looks like it should, and it feels like it should. Even on Gran Turismo 5 or 6, you could soften up the suspension, but it never looked as fully authentic as this does in this replay. It looks like a real car taking a real corner, how you imagine a muscle car doing so. That is awesome. And as I said, Driver was doing that years ago, so although it's not as realistic a game overall, there are certainly things which can be learned from these smaller titles. And that's one of the reasons why I review all of these other driving games as well, because they are worthy of having the spotlight. Now, getting back to this car, of course, the spec is familiar to any fan. 425 horsepower, 490 pound-feet of torque, which is very impressive, 7 litre V8 of course, and it's pretty heavy. 1724 kilos is a lot 
it is one of the heavier muscle cars in GT6, and there aren't that many muscle cars on GT7, but by definition is one of the heavier ones. Or one of the lighter ones, given that there aren't that many to work with. The horsepower per ton is not bad, actually, for such a heavy car, it's just under 250, which is actually similar to a modern hot hatch, and in some cases better than one. So that's quite good, actually, for such an old-school, big, heavy car. And the pricing is also quite good, 80 grand. So, if you wanted to summarise my thoughts about this car in Gran Turismo Sport, I would definitely say it's worth checking out. Now, if you're not a muscle car fan, well then you're probably not going to be too excited about any muscle car option, but if you are a fan of classic muscle cars, or if, of course, you're a fan of the Challenger, and I know a lot of people did want this car to come back to the game, so I'm happy for you guys, if you are that kind of person, you probably already own the car, let's be honest, because the update's been out for a couple of weeks now, so, I mean, you've got no reason not to, it's not exactly expensive. So, if you haven't bought it for whatever reason, maybe you haven't been on the game, or you haven't updated it, or whatever, definitely check this one out. I have had messages and comments from some people who have thought of this as being a bit challenging to drive, and I could see why, when I was initially softening up the suspension and altering the diff to make it drift more, I could certainly feel that it has a tendency to overcook it in drifts and to just spin out instead of holding the drift. But as with many cars, that's not really an issue that you can't fix with more careful throttle control and of course more of a careful and deliberate diff setup along with suspension and tyres of course, as you would need to set up correctly in any car that you want to drift. It is true, some cars are easier to drive or easier to drift straight out of the crate, but others just aren't. And if there's any car that you could give a bit of leeway and justify being a bit more challenging, surely it's one like this. It's an icon it's earned a little bit of leeway, so if you want to stick with it, get it drifting, it's not that difficult, and it's a whole lot of fun. As far as its competition potential, well, the game is very heavily geared more towards modern cars, so don't expect to beat everything in the category with it, but if you focus on dropping the weight, and potentially keep the power quite low rather than overly high, it can be a good weapon, in a similar way to how I used to use cars like the Nova on Gran Turismo 6. They are deceptively good as long as you focus on everything else apart from power. Because that, in a muscle car, will just take care of itself. But that's it overall for this review. Certainly a more authentic experience for Challenger fans and a very enjoyable one as well. Plus, it sounds fantastic also. But that's it for this pick. Of course, I'll see you guys next time. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.